Wings asleep beside Hear his voice Shake my window Sweet seducing sighs Get me out Into the night time Four walls won't hold me tonight If this town Is just an apple Then let me take a bite do they say why, 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 why? Tell them that it's human nature. Why, why, why? Does it do me that way? Do they say why, why, why? Tell them that it's human nature. Hello, folks, and welcome back to the Short Vol Show. And joining me on a Sunday night, you are. Uh, and. After a little reflection over the weekend, we look forward to the markets coming into the day Monday. Now, like many people, I, on Friday, or, yeah, on Friday, I was saying to myself, ah, not another tweet. Every time I start to make money, there's another tweet. And I realized that that's kind of a silly way to look at things on reflection, because it's not the president's fault if... Uh, the VIX doesn't go back into contango. You can't blame... Well, maybe it is his fault if that happens, but it's not his fault if I lose money because uh, it's up to me to figure out what might happen uh, that could cause my whatever plan I have to not work. And so it's silly to blame somebody else or a tweet for not making money, but I can definitely say that it's been a really frustrating ride lately on the short vol. It's like we had several times. I don't even know if last weekend is that much different th than uh, than this weekend. We've had several times where like it looked like we were coming into contango. Everything looked great. And, you know, maybe we actually have turned a corner last week, breaking back above that 200 day moving average in the major indices and um, getting off the lows. Maybe that was the turning point. We'll have to wait and see. But definitely, um, it was a difficult difficult Friday and frustrating. I kind of feel like, oh, okay, now we have to wait over the weekend to see what happens. Uh, I am heartened by some things, though. Um, we did get this. There's this guy, Pat Hennessy, who I uh, follow uh, on Twitter and uh, love to uh, get him on the show sometime. Hint, hint, Pat. Um, I'm not sure. I know he's a pro trader and he might have something in his company that makes it so he can't do that. He might have mentioned something about that. But anyway, let's pull up his tweet. He's basically, what he's saying is, is that, and I think a lot of us have noticed this who trade volatility, is that the VIX doesn't seem to be spiking that much on these down moves. In fact, we haven't really taken out the high of like 25 uh, that uh, we got a couple weeks ago. Here's a, a look at the VIX here. And um, yeah, it, the uh, let me uh, transition over to that picture. But yeah, the, the, uh, the VIX is not really uh, that seems to be, it doesn't seem to be that disturbed by everything that's been happening. It seems like... Uh, it goes up a little bit, but that's it. So looking over at the chart here, uh, on these down moves, we're getting less and less response from the VIX. It's like kind of unresponsive. It's kind of like uh, sort of shrugs it off. Now it does go up, but it only goes up a point or two. And percentage wise, that's not much. That's like less than when, you know, last summer when we would get a spike from like 10 to 15, that's a much bigger percentage move than what we're getting now on these downdrafts. And so that gives me hope as a short vol guy. It's kind of like, well, if it can't seem to go higher and each time it tries to go higher, it, it, it kind of goes a little less higher. Does that mean we're gearing up for a down move into a lower range? And I think there is some evidence of that. Um, but once again, with a derivative product, uh, we are based on w the price action, in my opinion at least, in the, uh, the SPX and uh, the underlying. And, you know, we, if we look at the chart here, uh, what does that chart look, look like to you? It looks like to me like it's going down right now. And, uh, you know, still looks like it's going down. Now you can see, you know, we did get some 
upward action last week. Now this is a three week chart looks like, uh, maybe 20 days. Uh, and you can see we did get uh, that finally, we did get a couple days of rally put together. You can see all the price action here is like one day of rally and then sell off, sell off, sell off. We finally were able to put a couple days together. Uh, almost, I'm not sure if we ended the third day up. Looks like we might've ended the third day rally up, but then gave back a whole lot. Um, the market seems to be very focused on these like world events and the uh, the tariff situation right now. And uh, a negative news story is uh, continues to drag the, the markets down. Now, um, volatility, once again, um, the situation right now is uh, we're on a Sunday. Futures have opened and they are up. Uh, Dow futures up. Uh, the YM futures up 127. NASDAQ up 43. ES up 12. So um, I don't think that's surprising to anybody that we get this bounce. But this is just part of the price action we've been having. Down, up, down, lower, up. And so the question will be, does this follow through in tomorrow morning up and you know, at, at this point, with the big percentage moves we've been having, up, you know, a half a percent or even three quarters of a percent doesn't really become a trend unless it keeps going. And right now, if the market opens here, we would be up a uh, half a percent. And that's nothing compared to this market. That could easily get uh, given away again just based on one tweet. So, um, you know, the market very sensitive now, and we'll have to see if it becomes increasingly resilient to these uh, these shocks that we're getting from uh, political players, or if it starts to just shake this stuff off. Because if you remember last year, when the market's in rally mode, it doesn't matter how much bad news you get, it seems, we just keep rallying. And conversely, when the market's in sell-off mode, everything is interpreted as bad, it seems like. Um so, but if we were to just kind of look at this chart I have here and kind of look at it only in the last, you know, five days or something, we can see, or let's say two weeks, uh, we can see, you know, we're sideways from where we were on uh, March 22nd. You know, we're sideways from there. So we can see this in the terms of, okay, it's a sell-off, but we could also see it as we're just moving sideways here. And if... If we do continue to move sideways and not take out the new lows, that is also a scenario for volatility coming in because that means that we are uh, we're not selling off. We're going sideways. And um, but right now the realized volatility, and by that I mean the actual price movement every day, is justifying the higher VIX. But as Pat Hennessy and others have pointed out, um, we're not seeing that much fear from the fear gauge. And, you know, there's been speculation. Why is that? Is it because all the short guys are no longer leveraged short and thus there's not the, the, the uh, you know, the buyback pressure, the, the sort of short color covering, if you will? Um, does it mean that... Um, and, you know, the other question is the, 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 this lack of the VIX moving above 25 coincides with a very low uh, V VIX right now. And other people have talked about that. Well, why is the V VIX so low? Um, what does that signify the V VIX being low? Well, V VIX is a uh, indication of the volatility of the VIX. Thus, the option buying and selling action in the VIX dictates, dictates the V VIX. So even if vol is moving around, and volatility is elevated. If you've got mostly sellers in the in, in the VIX options, then VVIX is going to be lower, and that's what we have as an indication right now is sellers in the uh, actual VIX options uh, have brought the VVIX down below 100 again. Now you know six months ago we were like shocked when it went above 100. However, uh, we saw on February 7th uh, VVIX got to uh, I. Think I think it got to 200. I'm thinking of the, of 176, but it might have got above 200. Let's just let me just refresh my memory here. Uh, but VVIX, you know, has been elevated and been over 100 for a while, um, and now going back below 100, 
is that bull is that bearish for volatility in general or is it uh you know a more nuanced meaning behind it i would probably say a more nuanced meaning behind it but let's take a look at uh the one year okay so we did get to 203 in the vvix on that february date and it was the day after that we were in the 170s okay so um but if you look at the chart here you know vvix going down now is the, will the vvix lead the vix down so this is another possible indicator that vol could come in vvix down vvix down a VIX unable to seem to get to higher highs, B. Um, and SPX not making lower lows, C. So those are all possible reasons for uh, for vol to come in. Now, the counter side is that realized volatility is still up there. So stuff's moving around uh, a lot. And so that kind of justifies the volatility. But for whatever reason, we don't have... It seems like maybe what it is is that these these people that had been buying the options in the VIX uh, were like speculators that you know the market was going to move lower and maybe those guys have made some money and now they're not caring to speculate that we move a whole lot lower from here or the risk reward doesn't seem to be there for them as much because remember now with prices higher VIX options cost more and you're not getting as much bang for your buck as you were when prices were kind of in the gutter when we had the VIX down by the tens. Um, so that is a reason why people might not want to pay up as much for VIX options. Um, also, with this Volpocalypse and Volmageddon and everything, there has been more education for people about the VIX, and maybe some people learned uh, that there's better ways to short the market than uh, getting long the VIX. Uh, most people, I would say, are long the market, and so their reaction to fear as opposed to, to shorting the market would be just to either lighten up on what they're long or not continue buying stuff that they usually buy as far as equities. Um, so whatever the reason, VIX, uh, down now it was up six on Friday but still below 100 right now at 98 um, I'm pretty excited I'm having uh, I'm doing an interview tomorrow with somebody who has a uh, comes from a different world so that's really exciting uh, somebody who's not in the financial markets not in the trading arena if you will uh, and who has a completely different perspective on things but is uh pretty bearish on the markets so uh that will be interesting to check out um we are gonna do the interview tomorrow and and um and i'm excited for that and interesting to see always interesting to see a different perspective um many people who don't um who don't follow the markets like traders do um kind of view the whole trading profession as being sort of bullish. Uh, of course, there are many out there who have been short these markets for a long time. Um, but there are people out there in the world who are um, so skeptical of the uh, financial system that they would not consider sh coming in and shorting stocks a prudent thing to do because of they feel that like the whole market, like the whole structure of the markets and stuff might be in for a tumble. And therefore, you know, if you shorted the markets, you might not even be able to get that money out if things did actually collapse. And um, so I want, I wanted to, you know, this is, uh, there's a whole section of YouTube that, um, uh, that sort of thinks differently. And I want to bring that a little bit here to people because it's fascinating to me and, um, and I want to expose people to that. So I won't say anything more about it because as I just had a conversation with about somebody about talking about interviews before they happen, I don't want to somehow jinx it. But anyway, uh, as we speak, the e mini's up uh, 1475 on a Sunday night. Uh, we are contemplating a another week after... Uh, pretty hopeful week for a lot of it last week. I mean, we had three days out of 
uh, out of five last week that we were rallying. So that was uh, that's a change because the weeks before that was almost all down. So um, if we move f from uh, you know down the down move into sideways, if we get sideways action this week and we don't take out the lows for the rest of this week, then uh, for this next week, then, you know, we could pretty much say we're in sideways action. And uh, once the market sort of digests that we're no longer moving down and we're moving sideways, uh, we could see some volatility coming in. Uh, I find it interesting that um, as I continue to grow as a channel, I am attracting some uh, uh, different views. I do get some down votes and things like that. And I, I sort of welcome that because I want uh, people of opposing views to be checking me out. I think that's interesting. Uh, I, I, what I say should be defendable. So I don't shy away from uh, somebody saying that they don't believe what I say uh, or something like that because... Um, I am open to scrutiny, so please scrutinize if you like. That's perfectly fine. Uh, so coming into this week, um, I will be here another week, and then I am on. Uh, I'm going to England for a week, so I'm going to try to figure out how I'm going to broadcast from England, or if I'm going to broadcast from England. I I, I definitely do want to, um, because that would be interesting. I'm trying to find uh, a friend who's uh, in. London in the city working there so that maybe I can do a video from there somewhere. My father took me when I was young to Lloyd's of London and um, I don't really want to... He, he did offer to like drum up some of his old connections to get me back down on the floor of Lloyd's of London but I, I've been there. I've seen it once before and I, I don't really want to hassle him too much on that but um, excited to be going to check out London for a little while. Um, so we'll see what happens coming into the week. Uh, right now, VIX futures are down. Um, the front month trading uh, 2015, which is uh, down 47 cents currently. The second month, 1930, down 22 cents. Uh, the back months are kind of stacking up around the mid-19s right now. Uh, front month... Uh, a little over 20. VIX did end around 21.49. So, you know, all we need is like a, a two-point move down in the VIX would get us to 19.49, and that would get us to like even with the whole chart here. So we need, to get back into Katango right now, we need three and a half, four-point move down in the VIX, which means a rally. We would have to get a rally this week in the, in the uh, SPX at least a little bit of a rally to get back into contango. Um, I don't see the VIX melting by three or four points with us just staying flat here. I, I see us needing to rally a little bit for that to happen. Um, and this is another spot where I can see people going in. You know, if we do get a little rally tomorrow, I can see a lot of people going into your T VIX or your VXX and buying a little, looking to buy a dip, looking to. Uh, accumulate a little VXX, buy a little vol, and hang out for that inevitable tweet, which we all know at this point is coming at some point during this week. So um, I think people are going to start. I, I could very much see retail people, you know, thinking about this and saying, aha, I know what I'll do. I will wait till, you know, uh, we get a little rally in the market, wait till. You know, your UVXY backs off again down to like 18. Wait till your uh, VXX backs down to like 45. And then scoop a little and hang out and wait for that tweet. I can see people doing that play. And, um, and you know, it makes sense in a way. The only thing I have to say is what I always say with that play is keep an eye on that term structure, folks. Because if we do move back into Contango, which, you know, I mean... At this point, I think I've lost all credibility because I keep I get so I got so excited last week with the three up days and we were just about to contango. I was so excited. I'm like tweeting. I'm like I'm I'm posting on stock twits like the play by play every minute, back and forth, back and forth. I'm like, oh, we're almost in contango. We're almost in contango. And then boom, the tweet comes and it's ruined again and we're completely away from it. It was kind of like a 
agony of defeat moment on Friday with Val going back up again and us just rolling over. So uh, it feels like I just keep, it feels like I'm fighting this uphill battle to get back in Contango. And I know that we will get there and it's just a question of when, but my patience wears thin at this point. And it's like every time we seem to get there, then that tweet comes and I'm not, once again, I am not blaming someone else for my trading losses. I am just stating that I'm frustrated. I get I get frustrated because everything seems to be working great. And then, boom, that tweet comes and stuff takes off. So maybe if you can't beat him, join him. Maybe I should be accumulating a little volatility when it's calm and just hanging out. And then when that tweet comes, stuff jumps up two points and you sell it. Uh, it's just that that play might be played out by now. Who knows? Um, but I know a lot of people are going to be looking to do that. So we'll have to see what happens this week. Um, thanks, everybody, for your support over the last few days. Uh, and I'm sorry if the volume was bad. Is that better? Mm, da, da, da. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to put the volume up. Is that too loud? Abracadabra, UVXY was 35. It's only 20 now. It, yeah. Well, um, it was only 35 for a little while, though. That's the only thing. Um, I think, short the straddle has been working. I think... Uh, Let's see what you got. Let's see what we have here in the in the quotes. Uh, my theory is the VIX isn't responding because we're very near the double bottom level on the SPX, and market just thinks it will bounce and go higher. Yeah, I I would I would agree with that. Um, it's funny how the the VIX usually is moves around more, and then the futures kind of dampen that because if the VIX spikes up, the futures guy go guys go well. We're not gonna bring it up that much. We'll bring it up like half as much as the VIX because we don't. We're not really buying this. Hey James, what's going on? Um, and and, uh, and so it's a whole dampening effect. But the thing is, is like if the VIX is only going up to like twenty one and a half, then what are the futures doing? They're not going up that much at all. I mean, we are not. Even though we got a big down move Friday, we're not that far in the futures from where we were. I mean. 2023 in the front month isn't that, you know, there's not that much for this to go down for us to be in contango. It really isn't. Okay, well, um, thank you for pointing out the volume problem again. I keep having more volume problems, it seems. Uh, uh, but I will turn it louder. Uh, I have to err on the side of, uh, of having it too loud. Um, but excited for tomorrow. Uh, thanks, you guys, for tuning in. And uh, I hope everyone has better luck next week with uh, with the moves. If you are looking to uh, accumulate a little and wait for that pop, then I hope that works for you. As for me, I'm sticking short, and I'm going to keep riding. I've got 60... Let me see how many days left I got in my, in my June. I've got... Um, let's see. Hold on. Um, I got 60 something days left until June expiration. So that's exciting. Thank you uh, everybody for watching and good luck tomorrow and I will see you next time. Bye bye.